we'd like to introduce you to two special people working to overcome barriers in STEM education. They built a product, a program, and a company, all before they went to college. We started this thinking, you know, let's make like this a summer project, right? And we went and kind of threw some motors in a little shell and, you know, put a processor around it, coded something up. Taking this kind of thrown together kit we made and putting it in front of students and seeing how locked in they get to it and they just take it and run with it. That's when you get the confidence that, hey, look, like we might have stumbled onto something big here. My name is Siddharth Srinivasan and, you know, I'm one of the co-founders of Trashbots. Hey, my name is Rohit Srinivasan, and I'm one of the co-founders of Trashbots. These big-hearted brothers took their volunteering experience and put it to work in solving a worldwide issue. Their natural leadership and people-first commitment are setting the best example for entrepreneurs everywhere, of every age. Can you tell us some more about what Trashbots is exactly? I think why our customers love Trashbots so much is because it's more than just a kit or just a robot. It's actually a full platform. And so what that means is we kind of transcend just a hardware and we have three parts for a platform. First part is our hardware. And so you can see how, you know, it has like an LED matrix. It has two motors, it has a speaker, it has half a dozen different sensors, an accelerometer, thermometer, gyro, motor encoder, compass, and buttons. Right, so kids are actually interacting with us tangibly and learning about what robotics means, what engineering means. Next part of the platform is our app, right? So we have a basic block programming app that makes it such that it's super easy for kids to start learning coding at a young age. And so essentially from a, with a few taps of a button, kids are going from knowing nothing about coding to basic block programming concepts like looping and to actually using that as a foundation to go and teach Python throughout that entire progression with our software. The next part of our platform is our curriculum, right? So now we have about 80 hours of curriculum spanning kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. It's being updated every single week and, you know, has a lot of video materials, has a lot of document materials, right? And just makes it really easy to introduce trash plots into the classroom and start learning STEM and coding concepts right away. And so, you know, that's kind of how we make it a platform because we can kind of drive, um, you know, community-based lessons. We can actually, you know, have webinars and really perfectly blend this digital sphere plus our physical sphere. How did you come up with the idea for Trashbots? Growing up, obviously, we were really, really interested in learning computer science and robotics. And then when we got to high school, we had the opportunity to go work with a nonprofit <clears throat> and go travel around the world, basically teaching computer science and robotics camps. And then as a teacher, even we found it was it was very difficult to find engaging tools that kids liked that were, were, were useful so that they could learn computer science or robotics or learn technical skills as well as learn creativity and problem solving in a way that was cost effective, a way that was easy, a way that was fun, a way that was intuitive. And so, you know, even as, even as educators, we struggled a little bit to do that. And it was so much so we went back to the United States and asked the teachers that we had uh, what, what tools they had used so maybe we could better, you know, maybe we're not using something correctly. And they even admitted that they that there's not a lot of like affordable, easy to use curriculum that focus on creativity and problem solving. So that's when Siddharth and I decided to go make it. So we teamed up with our third co-founder who was uh, at a Chief Arctic and National Instruments and we created Trashbots. And then since then, Trashbots has obviously grown immensely. And now we're in school districts all across the country. Research shows that the earlier we build a basic foundation for STEM by tapping on our children's potential, the more successful they will be later in life. For example, look at how STEM impacted Rohit and Siddharth's lives. Their startup is leading the way toward a more accessible future for edtech. Encouraging STEM for future generations clears a path for more leaders, big thinkers, and entrepreneurs who take action when they see a problem. Trashbots' approach, for example, is on point for what research says about supporting better learning in students. We need more entrepreneurs like Rohit and Siddharth who combine business with what the world actually needs. On that note, how have you been influencing the culture at your company? I mean, our slogan that we've really adopted is like play productively. And yes, we really adopt that through our, our, our product and how we interact with our students. But it's also, you know, how our company culture kind of form, forms, right? I mean, obviously we have a productive goal of building out this company and building out this this product that students and teachers and parents are going to love but it's also like you know having fun while you're doing that right playing but it's productive 
right? And so, you know, we're, we're very, very informal with each other in this company. You know, always we try, we try to have strategic retreats here and there, um, you know, with the executive leadership, but also just like, you know, going and getting tacos with the entire content development team was something we did and stuff like that. Just making sure everybody is, you know, enjoying their experience along this, this journey um, to, you know, complete this macro goal we had. When you first started out, where did you find resources? Our local startup newsletters, right? You can like just being plugged into the entrepreneurial community and the startup community in whatever area you're in, I think is super powerful. So Starts and I obviously were in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas is a booming sort of startup town. So just being able to know what's going on and who, what sort of movements are going on in your area, in your geography, is I think it's just something that's just good to know. Yeah, I mean, being plugged in and hustling on networking is extremely important. I mean, Roth and I are avid users of LinkedIn and we often use that too. We're like, hey, like, look, we want to go and get in touch with the senior director or whatever of something at this company because we think there might be an interesting partnership. So just going on LinkedIn, seeing who common connections are and getting that introduction, right? Further just expanding your network of people who, um, you know, you can help and they can help you, I think is very important. Those are all great suggestions. It seems like Rohit and Siddharth have hit the nail on the head. You need to be resourceful as a young entrepreneur. In the past decade, the number of teenagers setting up businesses has increased eightfold. Technology startups primarily have been driving the number from 500 to more than 4,000 businesses started by young entrepreneurs who are keeping their eyes on the future. Truick and Startup Savant want to help make that future accessible for everyone. That's why we wrote a guide on 20 business resources for young entrepreneurs. But back to you guys. What's something you wish you knew early on? Spend a lot of time researching and making business decisions and, and like developing frameworks for you to tackle a problem. Um, because early on, I think Start and I wasted a lot of time because, you know, we would just go start tackling the solution right away, which would like almost creates this trial and error mindset when a lot better is like create a framework of possible solutions and then discuss it and then go for the best one. So I think sort of like wait and attack mentality is something that Siddharth and I took a lot of time to uh, develop. Um, and I, just, I think it just comes with intuition. And so being able to do that, I think would be really, really useful. What advice do you have for aspiring entrepreneurs? Find issues that you think that are in, the, in, in this world that we live in, uh, that you're passionate about solving. And once you have that passion and once you see that problem, just jump, dive right in and just, just, just start working on it because you never knew, know the outcome.